The following message is a production of Tony Broom Ministries. This is a day the Lord has made. Amen. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Our devotion title today is Communion During Crisis. Amen. The church had a problem. We've always faced problems. Amen. But we've always been able during crisis to look to the Lord. Amen. The scripture tells us, I am the Lord, your God, who heals you. He says, I will be with you in your coming in and your going out. He said, I will be with you when you're up. I'll be with you when you're down. In Acts chapter 12, verse 1, the scripture tells us, Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. What in the world was Herod the king vexing the church for? Why didn't he leave the church alone? Because the church wasn't hurting him. The church was not bothering him. The church was only praising God. Amen. Well, they were bothering him in a way because he was an evil king. He was just a Roman puppet in the hands of the people. And he was out to be a people pleaser. That's all he was. He was vexing certain of the church. They had a problem. We face problems in the day that we live in. Amen. We face crisis throughout the world. We have what is known as economic crisis. We have social crisis. But the biggest thing, we have spiritual crisis. Spiritual crisis says that man has said we can do our own thing. We can solve our own problems. We can make our own way. But you cannot make it without an almighty God. Amen. We need the hand of God in our life. Yes. We need the hand of God in our nation. We need the hand of God in our world. Amen. Because without God we're lost. Amen. Without God we have no hope. Amen. Without God we are a disaster. We're just Amen. waiting to happen. Amen. Herod stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. They certainly had a problem. And there was persecution, verses 2 and 3. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Now, he's really getting bold, isn't he? He kills James, the brother of John, with the sword. And he saw that he didn't have a big problem about that, so he went a little further. He took Peter also, apprehended him, had him put in prison. There was persecution. When you are persecuting the church, you're hitting on God's little children. Yes. And when you're hitting on God's little children, you got in a whole heap of trouble. Yes. You're having a big problem when you're hitting on God's children. Yes. The scripture said here, Then were the days of unleavened bread. In the midst of crisis, during crisis, the church was able to come together and they were able to have communion together. They were able to worship together. They were able to draw strength from God and from each other and from His Word. When crisis comes, we cannot face crisis just like the world does. Because if we face crisis just like the world does, we will end up reacting just like they act. And we will end up having the same solutions they have, which is really no solution at all. The world tries to solve their problems, and they try to face crisis with the only way they know. That is through education, intelligence, philosophy, secularism, all, anything that has to do except God. Amen. And that's the one thing that we need. It's all right to have education. It's all right to have medical training. It's all right to have good business practices. But you've got to put God first. Amen. He still said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Amen. These days of unleavened bread, it goes back all the way to the Old Testament. Yes. They said this is the time of Passover. You are to observe the Passover. You are to have the feast of unleavened bread. No leaven would be found in your houses. You would be eating unleavened bread because it was a time when you came out of Egyptian bondage. God freed you from slavery. And we are in the days of unleavened bread as it were now in the church because we're facing crisis. We're facing the times when the old time religion is still the answer. 
But yet the New Age movement is trying to take over. Yeah. And there was a tug of war back and forth. It's like a civil war spiritually that's warring on between us. Yes. The new way is trying to take over and do away with the old way. Mm -hmm. And the old way still says we have the answers for life. Yeah, there are new things that we can use. There's new technology that we can use. I'm using some new technology right now to be able to read the scriptures and to have the sermon and to do the things I need to do. But it doesn't take the place of the old time Holy Ghost religion and salvation. Amen. Amen. You still have to seek the kingdom of God first and put Him first. Yes. And He said all the things that you need will be added to you. Yes. Then were the days of unleavened bread. It was not only a time of persecution, but it was a time of prayer. Yes. In verses 4 and 5, And when he had apprehended Peter, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Herod saying, you just wait till Passover's over, and I'll bring him forth, and I'll make a spectacle. I'll make a mock out of him. In the meantime, I'm going to put him in the care of 16 soldiers. See, it takes 16 soldiers to hold one Holy Ghost man. <laughs> So he put these 16 soldiers in charge of it. And Peter therefore was kept in prison. And the last part said, But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Mm -hmm. They prayed for him. Yeah. They didn't just say, Well, he's got him in prison. He's going to kill him. No use. Might as well give up. Pack our bags and go home. Mm -hmm. They said, No, this is time for war. This is a time for battle. Mm -hmm. We're not going in the streets and protesting. That's what these dumb people think that they think they ought to do. Yes. Go out and march and burn a flag. How stupid can you be? Very. They think that's the answer for something. No. That shows how unintelligent they are and unspiritual they are. Yes. The answer for the problems in life and the security problems that you're facing and the crisis problems that you're facing is that we have to pray. Hallelujah to His wonderful name. We have to call upon the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We have to call upon the God of Elijah. We have to call upon the God of Moses. We have to call upon the God of Daniel. We have to call upon the God of our Lord and Father, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They pray without ceasing unto God for Him. Prayer makes a difference. And then we see providence, verses 6 through 11. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains. He was sleeping. He wasn't biting his fingernails off. He wasn't worried all night taking Geritol and nerve pills. Said he was sleeping. Yeah. How can you do that? They're going to take you out and kill you the next day. You can sleep all night because either way you're going to be all right. Yes, if God frees him, that's fine. He's free. If he's killed, he'll just go into the arms of Jesus. Yes. They think they're going to kill us and do some big thing. They can't do nothing. No. God said, don't fear them that kill the body, and after that they have nothing they can do. Amen. Fear them, him who has power to cast both soul and body into hell. Yes. That's the one that we ought to fear. That's right. Peter was bound with two chains, but he was free as a bird in his heart. <laughs> and the keepers were before the prison. They kept the prison. They thought they got this thing locked up. Sixteen soldiers keeping him, two chains binding him, and all the keepers standing on the outside. But notice what happened. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. Amen. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. An angel has a power. God has a power to take your chains off. Amen. He's a chain breaker. Yeah. He has a power to take your chains off. The angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. Mm -hmm. Put your shoes on, Peter. We got somewhere to go. <laughs> and he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him and wist not, or he did not know what it was true that was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Peter said, I'm just seeing a vision. I'm just so apprehensive and I'm so anxious to get out of here. I'm seeing a vision what it would look like if I were to get out. He was like a sanctified bonny fight. I'm going to show you how to get out of here just in case they ever let you do get out. But it wasn't no vision. It was a real McCoy, hoy. It was a real thing. When they were past the first and second ward, 
they came into the iron gate that leadeth unto the city which opened to them of his own accord. In other words, that big old iron gate opened all by itself. Well, it opened all by itself but with the hand of God, of course. Amen. And they went out and passed on through one street. The angel don't leave you just when you get on the outside of the door. He'll go through one street with you just to make sure you're going to be all right. And forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. This is the providence of God. God still knows how to take care of his people. God still knows how to provide for your every need. We've heard testimony today where I didn't have the finances. I didn't know what I was going to do. But God provided the finances so that I could get paid for what I couldn't get paid for before. I think we need to give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Because God will provide for you. You're a senior. You don't have much income. The resources are very limited. You're in a place you never thought you would be. But God is still on your side. God is still able to provide your every need. We can see the providence and hand of God in all of this. Then there's perplexity. Sometimes when God does a miraculous thing, instead of saying glory, hallelujah, we say, what did he do to you? We're perplexed about this thing. Verses 12 through 17. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark where many were gathered together praying. They were gathered together praying for Peter, and God had already let him out of jail, and they didn't even know it. As Peter knocked at the door, he knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda, and when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad, girl, you're crazy. You done lost your mind. You're dreaming too, aren't you? Been watching too much Star Wars on television. <laughs> Something wrong with you. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Yeah. Amen. Then said they, it is his angel. Must be his spirit. Yeah. All kind of ideas can come in your mind when you don't want to believe what God says. Yeah. And when God's done something so big, you can't hardly believe it. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm never surprised by what God does. Amen. But I am always amazed. Yes, It does amaze me what God does. I know He can do all things. I say, Lord, you can do anything. He can do all things exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. And yet when God does it and comes through, it just amazes me. His grace, the song says, still amazes me. But Peter continued knocking. He wouldn't go away. He kept on knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw Him, they were astonished. But He beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto him how the Lord had brought him out of prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went to another place. Do you know why? Because God still had something for him to do. They were able to have communion together. They were able to fellowship during crisis. They were able to pray that God would move on this man's behalf. And if you and I are fussing, if we're quarreling, if we're at odds against each other, the right's against the left, the east against the west, the north against the south. We can't come to any agreement. We can't touch the hand of God because our heart's not right with God and we're not right with each other and we can't get anything done. It's like one step forward and two steps back. But when you're in communion together with God, when you're in communion together with each other, you can pray and you can see something work and you can see something happen. We've had evidence of the fact that when God's people pray, things can turn around, things can change. God can change the air. He can change the sea. He can change the land. He can change the government. The Bible said the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord like the rivers of water. He turns it whithersoever he will. God can turn that thing like he wants it to go because God is still in control. The scripture said God puts up one and sets up one and puts down another. He's the one that's in control. God is able. We've seen men and women go and fight for our freedom. Some of them have come back and some of them have not. And we honor those who serve our country and those who stand for our country. And many times in recent years, we've seen the morale 
go down so bad that people are not able to serve our country with a good heart and with a clean heart. But they can serve our country with a good heart and with a clean heart because God still loves America. Amen. God still loves yeah. Israel. Hallelujah. God still yeah. loves the nations of the world. Amen. And the scripture still tells me that God so loved the world, the whole world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. It doesn't matter how many Herods are stretching forth their hands to vex the church. It doesn't matter how many devils is trying to cause trouble. It doesn't matter how many people that are trying to kill and destroy because that's what the thief comes to do. He comes to kill and steal and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. He's still in control. He's still the answer. Jesus is still the answer for the world today. And he's still able to break every yoke. He's still able to lift every burden. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is able to come upon people. He's still able to heal. He's still able to save. He's still able to sanctify. He's still able to baptize in the Holy Ghost. He's still able to do great and mighty things because great is the Lord thy God in the midst of thee. The preceding message has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries. 